Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to draw hands and a flag in colored pencil using Powder Blender. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind Law Cree Fine Art. I was inspired to draw this piece because I was so sick of seeing so much work online posted by artists too that was inspired or drawn in a, a way that was intended to inspire hate. Whether you agreed with the artist, you were going to be angry about what their statement was, or if you disagreed with them, you were going to be angry about what their statement was. There was no way around that. And I kept seeing this so many times that I, I just wanted to do something that was the exact opposite. I wanted to do something that reminded everybody of who we actually are and not what the media is trying to tell everybody that we are. So that is where this piece came from. And when trying to think of what could I do that's the opposite, what can I do that is more about love than inspiring hate? And it seemed like the most simple image was really the answer. So I had a friend come over, we took photos, he has agreed to let you guys use these reference photos as well. I will have a link to those in the video description, so if you want to draw or paint something along these lines with a different background, there I had so many ideas, writing the word love in the background, I had tons of ideas. I would love to see some of you guys do some different things. But I would like to start filling up more of Facebook, more of social media with artwork done by artists that are have nothing to do with politics, that it all it is is to inspire love, to remind everybody who most of us are. Most of us are not what we're seeing on the media. Most of us actually love each other. Most of us do not judge people based on the color of skin. It, that's just not how the majority of us are. If you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where I've got a over two hour long version of this tutorial, complete with voiceover and some real time clips. So make sure to head over there and check that out. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my weekly one to two hour long tutorials, which are basically what you see here on YouTube, just one to two hours longer. Along with all of my past Patreon videos, there are over a hundred to keep you busy. That's a lot of videos for four bucks. Now that I'm done with that self promotion, let's move on to this demonstration. So when working with Powder Blender when using colored pencil, I don't need my base layers to be perfect and when I blend them out with Powder Blender, a lot of the pencil will get knocked off the paper, that's okay. This is a layering process. So I'm just kind of blocking in my light, my general lights and darks at this point. Most of the colors that I'm using are various shades of gray. There are a few dark navies and purples, but for the most part, even though you would look at this and go, okay, that's the... The blue portion of the flag you would automatically think you need a lot of blue you don't need as much so i've got this base layer but watch as i build how much gray i end up adding over this because if i left it this bright blue it wouldn't work with the warmer tones that i'm going to use on the rest of the flag so once i get that blocked in i'm going to go ahead and use a soft tool to blend out i've got a tiny bit of powder blender there they am using fabric castell polychromos for anything that I'm going to blend with powder blender. I don't want to use my oil based, or I'm sorry, my wax based pencils, the luminance or even Prismacolor. They don't work that well. They don't blend out this soft. The oil based pencils work beautifully with powder blender. So I get this really nice soft look. Now this is not as dark as I want it to go. So what I'm going to do is spray my texture fixative, one layer of that. I'm going to let it dry completely about 10 minutes or so. And then I go on to my next layer and watch how I build this up to get these really rich tones. So when I first started using the powder blender to blend colored pencil, my first thought was I'm really not getting my darks as dark as I one. I had a hard time with that. And what I was doing wrong, I was not using my texture fixative enough in between layers. That makes a big difference. So I blended that out, sprayed it again, let it dry. Now I'm on to my next layer. And I'm using a lot of this deep violet mixed in with some of the darker blues and then now going on top of that with grays. I don't want this to be a bright, bright blue here. I'm really paying attention to where my shadows and my highlights go. You see coming on top, my highlights there are being done with a cool gray pencil. Blending that out a bit with powder blender, and it does not take much of the powder blender. Now I did spray that, let it dry completely. Now I'm using the titanium white powder. This is the powder that comes in the kit with from brushandpencil.com. If you get their powder blender kit, this is where that it comes all together, or you can buy it individually. But I used that to add some some brighter white highlights, but I let it blend in with the blue because I don't want the highlights on the blue portion of the flag to be bright, bright white. Then going on to the stars, this is another area where you would look at it and go, 
okay, that's going to be white. You want them really bright. They're not. They're really various shades of gray. I did not use very much white. And then when we move on to the stripes here, this is another area where you would think, okay, those are red stripes. I'm going to use red. The majority of the color that I used here was actually various shades of a coral and pink color. I did not use that much red because I want to make sure that I've got this very shiny look on that flag. So look at how much of that coral color that I'm using. Now add in my darker reds and this is the same thing as the flag. Your first layers when you blend out, they're not going to be super rich or super deep when using powder blender. Once that dries completely or I blend it out and then let it dry with the touch up texture, I'm going to keep adding layer on top of layer until I get my color as rich as I want. But this allows me to get this very soft look. For the white stripes on the flag, that I used a gray color. I really didn't use much in the way of white for the highlights on any of this. I've got a lot of grays in there. You know, just building up, I'm really paying attention to my reference photo and building up where my lights and my darks go. I'm not that worried that my color is exact. What I'm more worried about at this point are my values. Make sure my darks are dark enough and my lights are light enough. That is going to make the biggest difference. Locking in all of the lights and darks again before I go through and blend out with the powder blender. Another layer of gray over the white stripes. And I'm using some of that lighter pink color for the darker shadows on the white stripes. That is the same color that I used for my brightest highlights on the red. Blending all of that out with Powder Blender. And I do wipe my, my blending tool, that's the soft tool. I wipe that off on a paper towel in between switching from like the red color into the white color so that I'm not smudging the colors together. I just have to wipe that a little bit onto another towel and I can keep using the same sponge. Now I'm coming through and just really focusing on highlights where my lightest colors go and where my darkest colors go. I had sprayed that again with my touch up texture and then let that dry. And you never really hit a point when you're working with powder blender and using touch up texture, working on the sanded paper like I am here, you never hit a point where you can't add more layers because that touch up texture adds more texture. So when we work on normal paper, let's say like the Fabriano Artistico like I typically use, if I use that and then blend out with odorless mineral spirits, you do get to a point where you can only get so many layers because you lose the tooth of the paper. When using touch-up texture, you don't lose that tooth. Now keep in mind touch-up texture, all these products, the touch-up texture and the final fixative, they are not flexible. So you want to use them on a surface that's going to stay perfectly flat. If you have a piece of artwork that you know you are going to roll in a tube for shipping purposes or something like that, you wouldn't want to use this product because it, it's not, you're not able to bend it without potentially cracking or causing problems in the in, the product. So here I'm working on, a, it's sanded paper. This is the Fisher 400. It's already mounted. So this is not going to bend at all. It's not something I have to worry about, but that is something that you want to keep in mind with these products is that they are not flexible. So just going to continue to build up with my lights and my darks here. And just remember when you're adding the highlights on top of the red, this is not an air. Don't automatically jump to highlight. I need white. No, in this case, that highlight is actually pink. And you can layer as many times as you want. You're going to go, going to go through a lot of ugly stages. That's okay. Don't let it frustrate you or make you give up. Let it dry, you know, put your next layer, blend it out, spray it with your touch-up texture, let it dry, and then come back to it and just keep doing that until it starts to look good or starts looking more like what you, you envisioned for your piece. A lot of darks in here. That's a really big thing to notice. It's just so easy to think I'm painting a flag that has white stripes. I'm going to use a lot of white. There's not that much white. Most of what I'm using are various shades of grays and darker pinks. When you work on sanded paper, you do not need to keep your pencils quite as sharp as you would when working on a regular, like a hot press watercolor paper or Stonehenge. Here, my pencils can be very, very dull and it, it just doesn't affect them. It, it's not a problem. Now you do have some of the pencil will fall off the paper as you work. Not as much as pastels. It's not quite nearly as messy as pastels, but enough that I do put a paper towel underneath the work so it makes cleanup easy. 
So now we are going to move on to the hands. Now here's the interesting thing about the hands. All of the colors that I used for the dark skin are the same colors that I used for the white skin. It's just a variation of how light or how dark I went with those colors, but it's the same. I'm not having to adjust much. We Both hands were under the same light source. So the colors are going to largely be the same in this case. So I'm blocking in. This looks terrible. It's messy. It looks like a child drew this. That is totally normal for this stage. I'm going to go a little bit darker with these colors than I know what I want my end result to be. Blending that out with Powder Blender. I'm starting with the lighter skin first before I move on to the dark because if I started with the dark skin, I would have to wipe off or wash off the, or I say wash off, that's not the right term, but kind of wipe off the colored pencil from that blending tool. Otherwise, I'm going to end up smearing that into the light skin and the light skin's gonna end up too dark. So I sprayed that with my touch-up texture, or my texture fixative, sorry, and now I'm going on to my next layer. I've got a lot of purple and blue that I'm using in both hands. And basically each hand or each layer should get a little better and then a little better. Just keep building your lights and your darks. Paying attention to where those highlights go. But if you look at where the hand is right now, that looks very much like something I would have drawn when I was 10. Whereas if you look at the finished piece, you can see it's going to get there. It's just going to take several layers. And this is something that I see a lot of artists struggle with. They call it finished too soon and then they get frustrated because it doesn't look how they want it to. Well, when you call it finished when you're only a quarter of the way through, of course it's not going to look how you want it to. So make sure, just keep layering, keep building. And that's one of the things I love with Powder Blender. You don't hit a point where you the paper just won't take more layers. That's one thing that's always been a challenge for a lot of colored pencil artists is you do hit that point where the paper just doesn't have enough tooth for the pen pencil to stick to anymore. Here, that's not a problem. The sanded paper is a very rough paper and the pencil comes off, it sticks really well. And so I'm even able to use my white polychromos that I don't typically use because they're, they're too translucent. They work beautifully over sanded paper. Lots of purples and blues here. Just paying attention to where my lights and darks go. If my color is not exactly right, that's not a big deal to me. My values, my lights and my darks are what I'm concerned with. That's what's going to make something look realistic. And if the colors are completely off, then I'll fix that in future layers. Right now, I just want to build up the detail. And it, as far as like here, you can see where the bones are and the back end of the, the where the wrist connects to the hand. Those are what I'm kind of focusing on more at this point. So I'm going to leave that hand alone, move on to the next hand. And this is the same thing. I'm really focusing more on my lights and my darks. And you can see when I work with Powder Blender how often I hold the pencil to the side because I'm covering more surface area faster. I would not recommend working that way. If you're working on hot pressed watercolor paper, Stonehenge, anything like that, where you're not working with Powder Blender, I do not recommend holding your pencil to the side like I'm doing here. You end up with a very rough, gritty, grainy look. Unless that's a look you're going for, you want to avoid that. You want to keep your pencil sharp and hold them upright. Here, because of working on this paper, on the sanded paper, and using Powder Blender, that's not a problem. This will all blend out perfectly smooth. So I can use what would traditionally be considered very bad, very lazy habits with pencils. It's not a problem. I can, can do that to save time and move through this a lot quicker holding that pencil to the side when using these products. Now when you spray with your texture fixative, sometimes you'll get where the, the nozzle gets a bit clogged. One of the things that I recommend doing is soaking it in hot water and let that really get cleaned out before you work. And make sure you shake the can up really, really well. But sometimes you'll have splatters no matter you know what you do. That's just the nature of this product. It's not defective. There's nothing wrong with it. It's also not a problem. It, when you go on your next layer, it blends out completely. So if you have an area where you're like, oh my gosh, I had a big droplet, droplet sp spray out, it's not a problem. Don't worry about it. Don't panic. When you do your next layer over it, you're not going to see it anymore. So I sprayed that and now let it dry. Now I'm onto my next layer. Starting to pull in a lot of blues. Now, anywhere where I used a black pencil to get my shading really dark, like under the fingers, um, along the side of his hand, there 
even though I'm using a black pencil, I'm not going to leave that black. I'm going to go over that with my blues and my burgundies so that it's not just a flat color. I A lot of people will tell you don't ever use black pencils or don't ever use black paint. I like black, but I always go over it with another color so that I get the depth so that it doesn't end with a very, very flat color. Because yes, black can be flat, but if you use it as a base and go on top of it with your reds and magentas, purples, yellow, uh, yeah, not yellows, don't use yellow, that, that will come out green. But magentas and reds and blues, that will give you a really nice, deep, rich color. Pulling a lot of orange into the skin here as well. Starting to work on the detail all around the hand, so around the fingernails, around the edges of the finger, starting to clean that up at this stage. Before, I was able to leave it pretty fuzzy. The, my edges weren't super sharp. It wasn't a big deal, but now as I move on and get towards the end of this, this is where I start focusing more on those little details. Really paying attention to my reference photo where the lights and the darks go. And now, as I'm not trying to just cover a large surface very quickly, you'll see that I start to hold my pencil upright. Now my hand is resting on my easel as I draw. If it wasn't, if I didn't have my hand resting on the easel and I felt like I needed to rest my hand on the work, I want to use a piece of glassine, and I will have links to everything that I used in the video description. But I use a piece of glassine. That keeps me from smudging my work, ending up with pencil all over the side of my hand or having the oils of my skin all over the artwork. So it looks like I'm resting my hand on the work. I'm not. It's resting on the easel right below where I'm working. Again, focusing on my, my values at this point, my, light, my lights and my darks. And the oranges add so much to skin tones. I mean, n most skin tones that I draw or paint, I use a fair amount of orange. It gives you this nice glow. But you don't want to do too much because you don't want them to necessarily make it the person look like they're orange. What I'm doing here is just adding it in little areas here and there. And you'll see me do this as I come onto my fingers on this one. I'll start adding a little bit of the oranges around them as well. Just little bits here and there. Don't overdo that, but the little bit that you do add looks really nice. Now you'll start seeing me use my luminance at this point because I'm pretty much done with powder blender. I don't need to really blend things out. So now I can switch over and start using more of my wax-based pencils. And I'm using those just based on, sometimes it's a color that I want that I don't have in my polychromos, and sometimes it's because I just like how thick and opaque it goes on. See, going back to the violets and the purples here. This was so much fun to draw because I was able to use so many different pencils, so many different colors and tones here. And notice the shadow around my fingers up against his hands. See how it fades from the really deep, dark shadow? And as it moves out, that shadow gets lighter, so I've got the reds and the oranges. So it's not just a harsh black start and stop where that shadow starts and ends. If you look at his thumb, there's another area where that orange really gave, made a big difference, right where his thumb is up against my fingers. That little bit of orange made the finger, the hand looks, it just caused that thumb to stand out a lot more and made it look much more realistic. Pulling some of those oranges now into my fingers too, just little bits here and there. You don't want to go crazy if you're using orange on a portrait, but those little bits in the right area really do make the skin look nice. Going back and adding some touch-ups now that I've got most of the hands blocked in. I'm just going to work a little bit more on my highlights. There's that coral kind of pink color. Darkening up the shadows here. 
Now with Powder Blender, you can work it where you, you blend so many times and do so many layers to where you can have it perfectly, perfectly smooth, or you can leave it here. I have a slightly grittier look, which I just liked for the feel of this piece, but you have the option. If you just keep layering, if you wanted something as smooth as what you would have gotten on like a hot pressed watercolor paper, just keep layering. But you can get, just, and that was one of the things that I wasn't too sure about when working on sanded paper. I was thinking, there's no way I'm going to get the detail I want. You can, and you can get it just as smooth. It just depends on what your goals are. So now I'm starting to work on the hairs on his arm. Now, you might look at that and go, okay, I'm just going to use one shade of pencil. Just make all the hair the same color. It won't look right. So here, some of these I'm going to use my black pencil for. Some of this I'll switch over to a brown pencil. Some of it I'll be using my Caput Mortem color, which is kind of a, a deep, like, violet reddish color, a really dark color. But I'm going to use several colors to build up the hair on his arm. And once I get those blocked in, I'm going to come back through with some lighter colors and work on his skin in between all of those hairs. Because right now, it kind of looks like the hairs are just floating on top and not a part of his, his actual arm and hand. So I need to make sure that I blend those in and make everything work together. And when I come back through with some of those lighter colors in between the little hairs, it makes a really big difference. Again, working on the shadow. So here's where I come back through and start working in between some of these colors or some of the little hair clumps. And you watch when you draw arm hair too. It's the same as drawing facial hair or hair in general. You want to build that hair in clumps and clusters where you'll have two or three or four strands that kind of come together into one little grouping. It's not just random confetti lines everywhere. That will not look natural. You want to make sure that you've got them overlapping and you want to make sure that you've got where they'll group together. It's the same thing with eyelashes. I mean, any time where you're working with hair, you're going to have the hair where it groups together. If you just have random random hair all over kind of separate. It doesn't look natural. It just looks like confetti. Coming through there with some purple and violet. And there is my finished piece. Again, if you would like to draw your own artwork or paint your own artwork with the reference photo that I have of these two hands, I will have a link to where you can get that photo over or down below in the video description. I would love to see more artists creating things that inspire a positive feeling, inspire love, not the hate that I'm seeing so often. So, and if you do this, please share it with me. I would love to see what you create, but that, the link for that photo will be below in the video description. I'm gonna have to put a pretty heavy filter, I think, on this video because I have a feeling no matter how I word things, I'm gonna have people that get offended by everything and want to argue. And that's not what this is about. This is about loving everybody and being happy and not being jerks. So there will be some definite word filters on this video. Oh, but my free speech, I should be allowed to say whatever I want. You have the freedom to say whatever you want. And I have the freedom to delete that. I love freedoms. Hey, have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going to it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos.